Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios. We're back with another new press row. We hope you enjoyed our signing day special last week. Usual cast of characters are here. Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Koontz, I'm Matt Finkel. And guys, let's start with the Lima Senior Spartans, the lone undefeated left in boys basketball, 18-0. Picked up three victories last week. You had the win over Fremont on Tuesday at home, on the road at Finley a victory, and then a win at Salina on Saturday. Which was the most impressive? I, mean, I guess I'd, I'd go with the one at Finley had to be the most impressive because it uh, really got the Spartans out of their comfort zone and was the, you know, Finley being up there has been a, a bugaboo for a lot of Lima senior teams. So uh, to me, you know, the, the Ross victory was the least impressive uh, only because it basically was a duplicate of their first victory. And apparently Ross didn't make any adjustments, kept doing the same thing they did before. But Finley, you know, they, they were on the ropes a little bit, and they got Finley out of that game plan, or you thought, with an eight-point lead in the third quarter, that Finley decides to hold the ball for three and a half minutes. Uh, I think Lima learned a good lesson there. And uh, the win at Salina is always good. That's always a tough place to win, but uh, they overwhelmed the Bulldogs eventually. So I think the, the one at Finley, to me, was the most important one and the most impressive. I'll take Finley as well. Here's why. Fremont Ross, you knew they are going to belt sand them, and they did, true to form. The win at Salina, good win. Salina's a 500 ball club. But Finley has been, as you said, that bugaboo. But most impressive in that game to me, whether you sit on the ball for three minutes and then turn around and do it yourself, you know, a little tomfoolery, if you will, and hold the team to three points and a half, I don't care who it is. That's impressive. I thought that was the win because... As we mentioned, and we've talked about it even with the throwback 44s that have been airing as well. A little cross-promotion plug there, by the way, guys. <laughs> you know, Finley always has had, you know, at, cer at certain points, Lima Senior's number. The Spartans turned that tide on them and held them. And it was also good for the Spartans to have a low-scoring game because what if a team does something similar down the line in the tournament, too? You said you don't care who it's against if you hold somebody to three points and a half. I say I don't care who it's against if you score 100 points in a game. I'll take that 100 points <laughs> over Fremont Ross because, yeah, the little Giants knew what they're getting into. They knew how good Lima Senior is. Lima Senior did it to them at Fremont Ross beginning of the season. They're able to come back and do it again. To me, that's a bit more impressive. Uh, not taking anything away from what they did at Finley because you're right. absolutely right. We talked about this on, on the pregame show in WIMA last Friday, how strange things happened to the Spartans at uh, Finley High School. And everything was lined up for those strange things to happen. They start off shooting the ball woefully from the floor in that first half against the Trojans, but were able to gut out that victory. But what they did against Fremont Ross, that, that, that's impressive to me to put up 100 points again. I liked what they when did When you say they, we're, we really are talking about Xavier Simpson, <laughs> because didn't he outscore them? He said it, he broke his own record, 65 points. That's right. what made that game he's, noteworthy to me. It's why we were listening on the radio when the game was well decided. Sure. He's averaging 62 alone against Fremont yeah, Ross. Mm -hmm. The burning question is this. Does Fremont Ross get round three? Or does the start Spartans from Toledo get a <laughs> shot at the Lima Senior Spartans? Well, and of course, the record that Xavier Simpson broke, single game scoring record, was set by his cousin Greg Simpson against Toledo start back in the early 90s. So whoever Lima Senior plays in that sectional semifinal is somebody somebody in the Simpson family has torched. Here's what I, the, something that's getting lost in all this, the Finley Lima Senior game. Who holds the ball down eight points in the third quarter? I mean, that's just tantamount to admitting we are nowhere good enough to beat you, which, you know, I think is true, but it's very rare for a team and a coach to accept that to such a degree that they will hold the ball for three and a half minutes in the third quarter down eight points. But that, who to do you me, blame? That shocks do you blame me. Finley for holding the ball, or do you blame Lima Sr. for sitting back in the zone and not coming out and guarding the ball? I don't blame Lima at all. I'm up eight. Yeah, you want to hold the ball, I win. Take it away. Why should I do anything? Of course I blame Finley if you want to call it blame. I'm just saying it's shocking for somebody to tantamountly admit that we, there's no way we can win this game. We're down eight in the third quarter, and we're going to stand here and watch the game tick away. That blew my mind. All right, guys, brackets are out. On Sunday they were revealed. This is year two of the super sectional format in the Northwest District. You approve? I, I'm fine with it, but it, it renders most of the sectionals useless, which... They you know, had been useless beforehand, but too. We used to occasionally get good teams match up in a sectional final. I mean, really good teams. Remember OG Shawnee and the Pollitz brothers, Jamar Butler era. 
Now that would not happen, and I'm fine with it, but the, the sectionals really are of hardly any consequence now. It would be a huge upset if some of the better teams don't get out to the district final, but that's what seeding is designed to do. But uh, the sectionals now are even more of an afterthought than they used to be. Let me ask you this. Is it time to get rid of the sectionals and have home home court advantage for the top seeds for the first two rounds? I, I'm not opposed to it. I I'm mean, down. you know. I could go for it. I don't know that they'll do that in the Northwest District yet. Other other districts do do it that way. But because, and, I mean, and the other thing. You've got these circumstances where, because of the way it's lined up, you've got teams having to travel, a high seed teams right. having to travel far away. The, the, the number one example everybody's tossing around this year in particular is Toledo St. John's, the two seed in their district, having to go all the way to Lakota to play, which nobody can ever remember St. John's playing an early round playoff game outside of the city of Toledo. But because Lima Senior is the one seed and the Spartans took the Central Catholic sent sectional, that sends St. John's out to Lakota, much like last year St. Henry had to go far. 93 miles St. Henry had to go last year. But if you want to look at a sectional, the one I'm most impressed with as far as what, had, what could be decent games is the Division Three sectional at Van Wert. You look at the matchups there, you've got a starter game with Wayne Trace, Allen East, the winner will play Jefferson, and then you've got Spencerville against Marion Local. Those two games are going to be played on a Saturday afternoon, the reason being the Division IV sectional also at Van Wert will get the Friday night dibs. So those will come in on a Saturday afternoon, a 1 and 2.30 scheduled time. Wayne Trace Jefferson, if that plays out, I think could be a very intriguing matchup. I also think you give Kirk Guttemuller an opportunity to play Spencerville again to have time to prepare because less than 24 hours prior, they got whacked by 19. Kurt, I was at the Lima Senior draw. He wasted zero time picking that spot on the bracket, sitting at the same table as Kevin Sensiball, looking him square in the face as he made his pick. Well, of course, Kevin Sensiball is famous for not showing much in those late season games, non-conference games where he knows he might see them again in the postseason. Yeah. I'll tell you this, the, the other thing that's pointed out now with the sectional sites and some of these long distances that have to be traveled is there aren't as many people apparently willing to host sectionals. We have a lot of different settings than we've had in the past for some of the sectional locations. And, you know, going back to your point about Toledo St. John's, they've had the cushiest setup <laughs> forever. All those Toledo teams did. They always played everything in Toledo. That's why it was so important for Lima Senior to beat them in the regular season. Now St. John's has to get out but of compass and that, leave the city. But from a Toledo perspective, why should they have to travel when you have all these Division I schools in Toledo. It's Lima's fault for being in the middle of nowhere, not having other <laughs> Division I schools nearby. The same why, reason why Lima Seniors always had such a, a hard time finding a conference to play in. Uh, middle I, America. I, I agree. Right. <laughs> but I, 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 I agree with that. But the point is, that's why Lima Senior went where they did. It wasn't because they wanted to play at Toledo Central Catholic or they didn't want to play well, they didn't Lakota. Want to go, who wants to go to Lakota? Right. They wanted St. John's to leave. And the Lakota, city. I think, is at least a little bit better than Tontogany. Right. Where that yeah. sectional used to be. But Lima's used to having to travel a long distance just for league games. It doesn't bother them or worry about it for tournament. The only thing they wanted to do is make sure that St. John's had to go somewhere for a change. And uh, I doubt it'll affect St. John's that badly. It'll still be Lima and St. John's for the district title. You talk about places hosting sectional games. Who'd have thunk that Allen East would be a sectional site right. as they are this year? The Division Four, and you know Matt Tabler, that number one seed. Let's see here. Do I go to Coldwater? I'd go five miles down the road right. to Allen East. I'm going to make the easy well, trip as well. That's what's so hilarious. You got teams like St. John's has to go to Lakota last year. St. Henry had to go to Findlay. How about Lima Central Catholic? Has there ever been a cushier draw than they got? The sectional at Elida, the district at Lima Senior, then the regional at Bowling Green. There's nobody any good coming in there. This is the easiest tournament road that has ever well, been drawn up ago, on LCC, paper. LCC Baseball, their postseason was Shawnee, ago. UNOH, yeah. Elida. Yeah. I mean, Don't leave Lima proper till they went to Columbus. Well, Basketball may not leave Lima proper, although I, I'm still going to say, you know, you still got to worry about Spencerville in that district, plus Wayne Trace, you never know who comes on that opposite side of uh, Spencerville and or rather of, uh, of LCC. And I know the T-Birds aren't looking past anybody right now. They could potentially have a rematch with Coldwater, yeah. who jumped right on that bottom line in that bracket. Yeah, Aaron, you brought, that's a good bracket. That's one of the ones that we're most looking forward to. Speaking of not leaving Lima proper, though, Mark Schein brought this point up, and I think it's a good one. Elida Bath will be played at Paulding yep. with the winner playing Shawnee. Now, mm -hmm. three schools separated by however many miles, all going to be up there in Paulding. That's another example where maybe home court could get a bigger crowd, a little more interest within 
the school districts in the area that it's actually being played in. I remember last year back to, you know, Coldwater for a minute. At the Coldwater site, there's two Division Four games. One of them had like Waynesfield, and I think one had, I think it was Waynesfield Ridgemont. There's like 22 people there. Yeah. Upper Sandusky came to Lima Senior last year and played Otsego, I think it was. There was like six people at Spartan Gymnasium. Well, here's another radical idea, Mark. You talked about playing host games. Why can't we come up with a scoring system to eliminate all the dead wood like football does? Because everybody, everybody deserves a chance. Well, I said it was radical, didn't I? I mean, but Why can't I mean, we honestly, do that? You, you go back, what was it, 15 years ago where Coldwater had that magical run in the Cinderella's. postseason? Right. You, 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 it, it, you saw what happened in the state of Indiana where they decided to make it more equitable and give everybody a chance to win a title. Yeah. And everyone wants to go back to just the one champion in the state of Indiana. you got to give everybody a chance. We're talking about basketball. It, to me, I, I, I don't understand why you'd want to eliminate somebody's opportunities to play. I just wanted to throw it out there, well. see what would happen. All right, so then which boys basketball conference race or winner at this point, because some of them have been decided, are you most surprised by? I'm still, I'm still a little shocked that the NWC has gone the way it is and that Spencerville has been out, is now out of the picture. I mean, they've lost to Lincoln View and to Crestview, not that they're not both good teams, but I think we, I thought Spencerville was a little better than that, uh, but give the Knights and the Lancers credit. Uh, otherwise, I, I don't know that there's a really big surprise. Maybe Defiance, we thought maybe they would take a step back, but you know, maybe the rest of the league took a step back with them, so they're also going to win the WBL again. But uh, otherwise, I haven't been too surprised, really. I think the MAC and BVC, just as far as the parity that's been mm -hmm. there in the two leagues this late in the season, where Coldwater, you know, tripped up a little bit in the league as well. Fort Recovery came on, they sputtered a little bit. I mean, the, Versailles right now still has a great shot to win the league, and you look at the BBC, and I mean, you've got a bit of a log jam up at the top there, too. Well, a similar situation in the Putnam County League with uh, Collide and Columbus Grove tied for first place in the PCL. Uh, you've got Miller City who will play a factor in that. You know, most likely, Miller City will play for second place with their game this week uh, against Columbus Grove. So uh, that one surprises a little bit just because we haven't had that clear definition. But, you know, the fact that we're looking at Defiance, Lincoln View, and Lima Senior all potentially being undefeated conference champions. A little bit of a surprise there that you've got that many undefeated conference champions. Defiance doing it without Cam Singleton for a few weeks as well. Cam came back this past weekend from a shoulder injury. Uh, from what it sounds like, it's uh, similar to the Jake Williams, Trey Cobb story of uh, years past at LCC that Cam's going to need surgery on the shoulder once he's uh, done with his season. But he can play through things right now. He's got the brace and he's ready to go. Obviously, wish him nothing but the best. I know we were talking about sectionals we were looking forward to, but that's a very interesting potential district final between Defiance and OG, considering they played mm -hmm. each other at Defiance earlier in the year. It was a good game, and I'd like to see that one again if we can get to that point. All right, let's close with the NBA All-Star Weekend. It's coming up. Give me your finest memory of, of a dunk contest or All-Star game or skills competition. Well, I, to me, there are three classics that will be forever and all time and will never be eclipsed by anything that will ever happen again. Uh, Dr. J's foul line dunk in the ABA yes. All-Star game. 76. Yeah. And you've got Magic coming back out of retirement in, uh, what was that, 93, 93 or something like that. And then uh, the Jordan slam dunk performance that he had uh, one of those years in the late you're 80s. Missing yeah, you're missing one. You're missing a big one. one. Who am I missing? Anyway. Larry Bird. Oh, you're missing oh, three corner in the air, Mark. walking off. That's That was roughly the same I time still as think Jordan. You guys are missing. So, Jordan, yeah. Jordan Dominique won. Yeah. yeah. You know, in Chicago Stadium. Bird in Chicago Stadium, yeah. walking off with the three point. And then uh, you mentioned Magic. That was one as well. Um, but another one, a guy that was also known as the father of our country, Sean Kemp, and how he used to obliterate. Those rims in the slam dunk contest. I loved watching Sean Kemp. Uh, the one I think you guys forgot is Vince Carter when he did Ooh. through the legs. That was, I, I think I'm showing my age here a little because that's like as far back as I go. And I know you guys were talking about stuff that I probably don't remember witnessing in person. You remember D. Brown inventing the dab? No. He's the originator of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah. He did there. the thing where yeah. he sh shielded yeah. his eyes yeah. from the pumped rim. Up his shoes. Yep. But that Vince Carter. Pretty cool. <laughs> so, all right, good. We'll hopefully make some new memories in the 2016 All-Star Game. Well, that does it for this week's Press Row. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week.